So the uh, future of Team Sky, who we've talked about so much over the last decade or so, is in doubt after the broadcaster Sky announced it will withdraw back in at the end of 2019. The news was broken to some stunned riders and staff over dinner at their training camp in New York on Tuesday night. Dave Brailsford was told uh, last week by uh, some uh, Sky executives, they told a shocked Brailsford that uh, Comcast's £30 billion takeover of Sky in September was a natural time to end the partnership. For more, we're joined by Sean Ingle, who's been writing about this in The Guardian. He is The Guardian senior sports writer. Sean, always good to have you on. Thanks a million. No worries at all, Joe. So uh, the Comcast reason was given to Dave Brailsford last uh, weekend. The obvious speculation straight away was wondering if all the various controversies surrounding this team have contributed in a very big way to Sky's decision. I don't know, is there any word on or off the record on that? Um, they, Sky, both publicly and off the record, are insisting that isn't the case. Um, there was some suggestions a couple of years ago that, that Sky might end... Um, their relationship with Team Sky maybe even last year, but um, because James Murdoch was such a big fan and uh, <clears throat> that that kind of continued and obviously Froome signed a new contract and then Grant Thomas did um, as well. So people thought, oh, they're, they're going to keep going. But I do think the Comcast deal, which you know came through in September, was a natural break. I mean, Sky invested an awful lot of money, you know, somewhere between sort of 30, 35 million pound a year. Mm. Um I mean, what really, what more could you get out of a team uh, than you've had over the last few years? And then, of course, there is that bad publicity. So it's probably a fairly easy decision for, for Comcast in the end. So what does it mean for the future of Team Sky? They vowed to go on once they can get a sponsor. I mean, it depends who you speak to. Um, if you speak to people involved in Team Sky, they sort of say, look at what we've got. You know, we've got most of the best, many of the best riders in the world. There's Froome, there's Thomas. And then we have, you know, we have a brilliant uh, young Colombian rider who uh, is going to basically take over them both and do brilliantly. Uh, and so why wouldn't, um, you know, somebody want to uh, you know, take over the team? Mm. However, um, another way of looking at it is Froome's going to be 35 come um, uh, uh, May 2020. Mm. Uh, Thomas is going to be 34. You know, Egan Bernal, the Colombian, is is brilliant but you know as a british sponsor or european sponsor really going to throw that much money to have a team led by him mm. i doubt it um i mean what i think will happen is they will try to get a sponsor in the next three four months and brailsford has sort of hinted and people are telling me off the record that really by the tour, time of the tour de france they really have to have someone's uh, no, sponsor in place otherwise you know it all go goes up in the air um it wouldn't shock me if um some riders and their agents start speaking to other teams early next year, maybe even sooner, because why wouldn't you? You know, when there's this much uncertainty, why don't you at least sort of play the field and see what's out there? Yeah. So it wouldn't shock me at all if if the whole team um, goes its own separate ways, you know, this time next year. I suppose there's a few different aspects to this which would make any uh, diehard Team Sky fans out there, I'm not sure we have many over in this part of the world, but um, would make them worry even if the architecture remains in place to a fairly high standard despite the ages of Chris Froome and the rest, even if that is there, you wonder what sponsors might be put off and might see the brand as tainted and is it the right ban ban uh, brand to get into bed with? Although, um, even if that's um, bridgeable, they are the best funded team, as I understand it, by some distance on the tour. And so you're not just looking for a sponsor if they want to maintain standards. You're looking for someone to come in and continue the 30, 40 million quid they're being given each year. Absolutely. I mean, if you speak to people inside Sky, they basically say we're a winning machine. It's not like, you know, there are there may be sponsors perhaps in the Middle East that will come in and think, you know, you know, I mean, look at what, what Qatar, what you know, Abu Dhabi have done with you know English football. Why wouldn't you want to have that? You know, you know, on your on your you know another winning machine like that. So they're yeah. hopeful in, in, in that aspect. Um, but you're right. I mean, I, I you know you look at what's happened in the last few years. Look at you know the whole Jiffy Bag uh, scandal. You look at um, you know what the Digital Culture and Media and Sports Select Committee said only in March. Mm. You know they said that you know Team Sky's policies were inconsistent with their original aim of winning clean and maintain the highest ethical standards within their sport. You've got Dr. Richard Freeman, of course, the form, uh, Team Sky's former doctor, facing a, a GMC uh, hearing in February, you know, over the, um, the alleged delivery of testosterone to the National um, Velodrome in, in Manchester in 2011. 
so you know the the, the bad news and the bad PR might not necessarily be going away in the future. Yes, I, I would think you are constantly looking over your shoulder for a whistleblower or some scandal to break, or who knows, even the laptop lost on holidays very inconveniently for everybody all around might surface, although I suspect that one uh, may not happen. Like, like, look, we're a particularly cynical bunch over here, so uh, I, I don't know if the brand is as affected as maybe we all feel, especially if the winning keeps on happening. But that's going to be very interesting. And uh, like, I wonder, is, is Brailsford the kind of fella that might be poached by other teams? Would he be that much in demand? I'm sure Chris Froome could command a couple of million and, and, and move elsewhere, maybe. But uh, it, it, what about Brailsford's stock? I, I, I mean, he wanted so much control and he's had so much control for a decade. And of course, he had so much control of British cycling before that. It would be, a, I mean, I, I'm not sure any team would you know, come in and say, here you are, you know. And the other thing, of course, is Brailsford has made a big thing over marginal gains and whether you swallow that or not. Yeah. Um, yeah. What he's had, of course, is a, a terrific amount of money, as you mentioned earlier. It means he's been able to buy the best of everything if he doesn't get that at another team, how does he do? You know, who knows? Um, I, I think it's very interesting, but he, he, you know, he has a lots of contacts in the commercial world. Mm. You know, there was talk of James Murdoch joining Tesla uh, a couple of months ago. If that happened, you know, might Tesla go in for Team Sky? Who knows? Might he, you know, go to a, you know, a Middle Eastern um, country and say, you know, give me 35 million. I, you know, I'll, <clears throat> I'll bring you more glory quite possibly. So, mm. I mean, it's very up in the air at the moment, but obviously his first priority is to, is to keep the band together. Yeah. So uh, the legacy of Team Sky is an interesting point. I mean, are, are they a byword for success? Are they a byword for uh, continuing the lies and the, the mistruths and the bending of the rules uh, is an interesting point. So what, they were launched in 2010. The ambition was to win a Tour de France by 2015. They managed to do it in, what, 2012, uh, working off memory. So like, it's just been absolutely extraordinary the success that they have achieved so i wonder what what is the legacy of team sky what are team sky a byword for now amongst the uh, british public at large well i mean it really does depend on whether you wear uh, red white and blue spectacles yeah or not i mean if you do you say well look this is a team that's won six the tour de france in seven years you know it won you know um the giro it won the vuelta um it won you know enormous number of stage races uh it also team sky and and sky itself would argue helped fuel the boom in in cycling among ordinary people in britain mm. um and create heroes out of bradley wiggins and maybe to a less extent chris Froome, but you know grant thomas as well and i think those who are more skeptical will say actually what were your founding principles it was to do everything to be white and white to do things a lot differently yeah not to sort of go into this grey area. And uh, and whether you're, even the biggest Team Sky fanboy will have to accept that if you go back to, you know, the original you know, documents, the original statements by Brailsford when they launched in, in 2010 in Millbank in London, they haven't lived up, up to that. So um, again, it, it really does depend on on on, um, on where you, your starting point really. And, and every time I'm writing Team Sky, I, you know, I will get dozens of people, you know, uh, saying I, you know, I'm not being rah rah enough. But um, you know, that that's just the way it is. I think it, it all comes on from your starting point. It's like Brexit, or it's like whatever else. You <laughs> yeah, know, how I, it is. I did that terribly unfair thing of asking you to speak for about sixty million people, which is is tough. What about your opinion of them then? Um, that 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 uh, that, that I mean. I kind of think you should hold people to the. If you say you're going to uphold to the higher standards, I think you you need to do it. And and I don't think they've done that. I think I think there are there are there are serious questions to answer about the Jiffy bag. I think there are questions that are ongoing. Particular, I mean, the testosterone thing. I mean, that's they that that hasn't gone away. You know, that was that was delivered to to you know the, the British centre where you know Team Sky and. Um, and British Cycling lived, and there's been no adequate explanation for why that happened. You know, I, I mean, you hear some stuff, you know, people float various theories about, but I mean, that, that's serious. I mean, if that was going on in in Russia or whatever else, I think people would roll their eyes. And, and I think I think it would be very interesting to see whether we ever really get to the bottom of that. But that I think is the one thing that's probably ongoing at, at the moment. Yeah, and my again, working off memory, my 
latest understanding of that was that the testosterone had arrived and then the defence was it had arrived there by accident, but that the company behind the delivery had refused to comment. That was the latest I seem to remember, which all didn't boil down to very much. Yeah, and there's, um, uh, without, I don't want to kind of go into, there are some various other theories you, you, you hear, um, which may or may not be true. So um, I think it'd be very interesting to see um, what happens when um, when Dr. Freeman appears before the, the GMC uh, you know, in February. But of course, he insists he's done nothing wrong. And we should make that point that, you know, Team Sky, Ember Recycling, um, you know, insist you know they, they've committed no no wrongdoing yeah you know the committee's finding that you mentioned uh, were, were frankly they didn't really buy much of what was being said before the house there's no legislative or judicial powers they have you know it was it, that was just a standalone finding was it exactly yeah so um i mean i mean they have they have that sort of force to uh, at least invite people uh, into parliament and they're able to, um, you know, make recommendations. But no, you're right. They can't. They can't turn around and say, you know, X X team or X player should be banned or whatever else. Mm, okay. So uh, end of an era, really. Uh, team Sky. It was eventful, that's for sure. And they'll have the tour upcoming in 2019, and then we'll have to see what happens across 2020. Listen, Sean. Thanks so much for giving us your time. Much appreciated. I'm sure people can and will read your piece on the Guardian about it. Thanks a million. Thank you, Joe. Hey, hope you enjoyed that latest offering from Off The Ball. If you want to subscribe, and you should, check out just up here. All our latest stuff is just down here. Generally, knock yourself out.